call it dear heavenly father we come to you under the name of jesus we thank you for this day we thank you for the beautiful class we are about to have that we pray that uh we will open our mind and heart and listen to every word that pastor teaches us so that we will know uh, how amazing are your works and how you have created us and what we have to do on this life jesus so that we can shine brighter for you lord i pray for all my classmates that i pray that uh, they will all come at time and we will have a good wifi connection throughout the sessions and every single words will be a blessing to us so that we can be a blessing to others be with us and guide us that everything we do be done for your glory in jesus name i pray amen 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 thank you yeah we'll get started um so uh, last week we mainly looked at the scriptural basis of why we claim that we can have uh, good total victory you know in jesus um and we looked at it, uh, that the victory that we have is mainly based on the finished work of the cross and the second thing that we saw is that uh, because of the finished work of the cross we have a certain identity in christ and out of that identity we now operate as victors and conquerors so uh, we looked at those two aspects and um, then we just had a very brief introduction uh, to you know, how because we are um because of our new identity in jesus and because of the finished work of the cross how we can actually start using this uh, to live a victorious life and we just had a small introduction to using the word of god in overcoming so uh, we just looked at one scripture last week first uh, peter 2 verses 2 and 3 where we looked at how newborns uh, they crave for milk uh, that 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 desire is a very deep desire that they have because now they have understood that when they whenever they have the milk uh, you know it takes away that feeling of hunger the feeling of emptiness and so they begin to cry for it they begin to crave for it and um, we too are asked Uh, to you uh, know abide in the word of god in that way crave for it in that way why because um, uh, we, we saw in first um, john that these um, the these believers yeah first john 2:14 in first john 2:14 the young men who are being addressed in first john 2:14 they are people who are able to overcome uh, satan uh, how by allowing the word to abide in them and uh, so we looked at the connection we saw how if we to have a deep craving for the word of god then we would spend time um, you know meditating on the word of god then the word of god would be able to richly abide in us and because the word is abiding in us uh, uh, you know it would come out of us whenever uh, a situation requires it so uh, we saw all of this in the very very brief introduction that we had last week so now just to look further uh, into this whole concept of how the word of god can be used uh, you know in our living a victorious overcoming life so um, the first point just to you know continue upon the first point where we uh, we said point number 1 is feeding your inner person with the word and in that context we were looking at all of these verses uh, so just to look at uh, look further into that um it, it, it says um, you know in first peter 2 2 to 3 uh, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the lord is good so the reason that uh, the believers are being asked to absorb the word of god uh, to consume the word of god is so that they can grow up in their salvation um now if we if we are thinking of salvation just as the salvation experience uh, where jesus christ has now you know um, forgiven us and we have been uh, regenerated into a new uh, creation by the holy spirit if we are thinking just in terms of that then it will not make sense what does it mean by growing up in your salvation here it's talking more about how you grow into uh, you know the the fruits of salvation uh, your life starts uh demonstrating the fact that you are saved 
the 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 actions that you do the choices that you make all of that starts reflecting uh, this salvation experience of yours so we grow up in salvation in the sense uh, we now start becoming more and more like christ we start uh, going undergoing that sanctification process where we start getting more and more because that word sanctify literally means to set apart right so now we start getting more and more set apart for jesus um no longer are we focused on the uh, on the material things or on sinful things but we start uh, setting ourselves apart for god and for his purposes more and more so we grow up in our salvation in that sense and uh, that happens only when we choose to crave you know deeply desire the spiritual milk so for for babies it would be you know the natural human uh, human milk but then over here for us it would be the word of god which becomes our uh, spiritual milk uh, so we see that uh, you know uh, just you know if you were to observe new believers when they first come to the lord when they first have their salvation experience they everything is so new and everything is so exciting and uh, there's such a deep gratitude to god for what he has done uh, and uh, there's such a longing to please him uh, and you know generally that term uh, the, the term first love is used you know for new believers who are still uh, you know full of the newness of what has happened to them the wonder of what has happened to them and so um, in the beginning days you know they are so excited about each scripture that god is giving every, every time something new is revealed to them from the bible they get so excited about it and uh, uh, you know they they say oh god is talking to me personally and uh, so yeah, the, it's a very uh, lovely experience and god wants us to continue to grow in that he doesn't want us to lose our passion he doesn't want us to become complacent uh, which is what sometimes happens um, you know if we don't continue to meditate on god's word the problem with this century uh, the problem especially with our current you know uh, um, the, the 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 current kind of world that we are living in you know with all the media and all of that um, it kind of discourages believers from truly meditating upon god's word uh, because the young believer when they first get saved you know they they are told that they need to you know grow in god's word uh, and because that is what will give them strength and so they sit down daily they open their bibles they they wait for god to speak uh, you know they and, and so they begin to discipline themselves but then um they're still new at it right they're still learning and so they may not always hear god very clearly they have not yet learned how to you know spend time in his presence and so they may not be able to uh, get instant revelations and also uh, they, 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 there are many things which they have not yet learned about um, the bible so there are passages which they will not even understand because uh, no one has really un, uh, explained to them uh, you know in what sense that back, uh, that that passage needs to be understood what is the background for it there are so many things that they don't understand and so then what happens is they start going to youtube you know youtube becomes their bible you have a whole bunch of sermons over there ready made sermons on any topic under the sun all you need to do is type out the topic that you want and you will get a whole bunch of sermons on that and then you just got to sit back and listen and so someone else is now telling you um, you know what you should believe someone else is now telling you what the meaning of the verses are and you are not receiving anything directly for yourself from your teacher from your guide because that's what the holy spirit is supposed to be right he is supposed to be our teacher he is supposed to be our guide he's the one uh, who is supposed to be leading us in our new christian walk but now what is happening some youtube preacher somewhere has decided that you know he's going to preach on this particular topic and he's going to you know bring out these particular aspects of that topic now are those particular aspects of that topic relevant for this new believer you know it may or may not be very applicable to his life situations on the other hand if like the people of old who never had never even heard of youtube if they literally had to sit on their own you know in god's presence and wait upon him patiently learn to hear from him if they went through that process then there's a kind of deep bonding 
that happens you know with 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 the lord and that is not happening in our you know in our, in our present day uh, there are so many believers who would rather spend their quiet time you know watching some youtube sermon rather than sitting down with the bible and just allowing god to speak out of the out of the scriptures uh, so um, this is a very you know dangerous step um, it's going to lead to a whole bunch of christians who have no clue how to hear from god it's not a it, it's 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 a very seriously dangerous thing uh, because we would end up with people who are underfed you see they are receiving good teaching from from the sermons and that is good but god is not able to impart to them things which they require for their life situations for what's going to happen to them in the in, you know in next week because god god is preparing you know you, have you noticed this again and again when we are spending our quiet time with him he brings scriptures to us and he 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 you know puts thoughts on, in our mind and then one week later you find yourself in a situation where those things become so relevant i mean this has happened to me again and again it's the, it's god preparing you beforehand for what is you know ahead and i'm like oh wow you know those scriptures that i was reading last week these are so applicable now for my current situation so this is that's the way the holy spirit the father who knows uh, what you will be facing the father who knows what you would be requiring he provides he feeds he uh, you know supplies you with all the right things that you would require for your uh, for your you know personal spiritual walk but then if you are not connected with him if you on the other hand you know are just going to a bunch of uh, youtube sermons and relying on them for nourishment um, they are nourishing sermons are good but are you receiving what you need for your immediate situations and so you cannot allow sermons to become a substitute uh, you know for you sitting there personally and meditating on god's word if you look at david you know king david he had no access to youtube sermons uh, and in fact he did not even have access to all these books you know we, which are written now we have this wonderful you know um, um, books uh, which in which we have so many things explained for us he didn't have any of those things all he had with him you know are um, the the scriptures themselves so he would sit and meditate upon those scriptures and this is what you know uh, david says in psalm 119 Eleven to sixteen, and I would like us to really, you know, um, focus on these words, even as we are reading them. Psalm one nineteen, eleven to sixteen, and I want you to think about uh, how David was meditating on Scripture. Why he was meditating on Scripture, you know, um, based on what he is saying over here in these verses about, you know, meditating on Scripture and learning from it, receiving from it. What is he saying about, you know, the importance of meditating on Scripture in these verses? And if we can also think about how Jesus would have gone through the same process, you know, whatever is mentioned over here in Psalm one one nine, eleven to sixteen. So think about David. writing down these words and also think about jesus practicing these words in his life and you know then we will you know touch upon a few more things uh, with regard to this so if someone could read out for us psalm 119 uh, verses 11 to 16 please psalm chapter 119 verse 11 to 16 i have hidden your word in my heart that i might not sin against you praise be to you o lord teach me your decrees with the lips with my lips i rake out all the laws that comes from your mouth i rejoice in the following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches i meditate on your precepts and consider your ways i delight in your decrees i will not neglect your word okay so here uh, we see david saying i have hidden your word in my heart that i might not sin against you you know no one is told beforehand okay at so and so time tomorrow you will be facing temptation temptation comes when it comes you know so we should have already hidden the word of god in our hearts and then when that time of temptation comes then we are able to immediately act upon the word which we have hidden in our hearts and you know so which is what we see jesus doing right 
when he went into the wilderness he had already spent years hiding the word of god in his heart i know and it says in verse 12 it says praise be to you lord teach me your decrees so over the years you know god had been teaching his decrees to david he taught his decrees to jesus because jesus took the effort to uh, you know spend time in god's presence so therefore they went through um, you know a regular uh, discipline of spending time in god's presence where god was teaching them his decrees and they were beginning to hide all of that in their hearts and so when the time came it says in verse 13 with my lips i recount all the laws that come from your mouth so when the time came for them to open their mouth and you know say all the things which god has been putting inside them they were able to instantly do that jesus christ when he was attacked when when there was temptation uh, which came upon him he was able to open his mouth and recount what you know had been hidden in his heart because um, he had spent time considering God's ways. See, that's, that's what it says in verse 15. It says, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. So David, Jesus, and all of these other people who valued God's word, they would sit over there. They would consider what is being said in God's word. They would try to understand why God was saying what he was saying. How can this be applied to our present life situations is what they would have sat over there and considered so they would have thought out these things and so you know when satan comes along and says you know why don't you worship me jesus has already been thinking about all of these things what is worship who should be worshipped why why what is the purpose of worship why i know why are we humans called to worship he's already considered all the things that you know on that topic so when the temptation came he knew what to respond. He knew what to say because he's already had has spent time meditating upon the precepts of God and considered his ways. And uh, so it says in verse 16, you know, David says, I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. You know, just to take one sample of the you know, of these temptations that we are talking about, uh, the temptations of Jesus. Uh, if we can, you know, just go to Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. We will just you know, look at one, one particular temptation. Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 to 7, if someone could read out. Matthew chapter 4, verse 5 to 7. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Okay, so over here, um, the devil takes him, you know, um, maybe it was through a vision, maybe not physically, you know, but he, he, Jesus kind of sees himself standing over there at the pinnacle of the temple. And uh, the devil is saying, you know, prove, prove that you are the son of God. If you really are the son of God, angels will immediately come and, you know, they will, uh, uh, they will protect you. They will not see to it that you are hurt. So, you know, prove, prove that you are actually the, the son of God by doing this. You know, so um, and he uses a quotation from Psalm 91. So it's basically uh, Satan taking Psalm 91, you know, applying a certain context to that, uh, a, a kind of um, perverted context to that and saying, you know, now, you know, practice Psalm 91 in this wrong manner, you know, so is what uh, Satan is tempting. So Psalm 91 is what Satan uses. Uh, Jesus, who is familiar with the scriptures, would have immediately recognized that you know the the devil is using Psalm ninety one, and his response, his response is taken from Deuteronomy six sixteen, which is talking about uh, a rebellion which the Israelites you know um, in uh, did uh, when they were in a place called Massa. Now, what is the connection between these two things? You know, just think about it. Psalm ninety one. Um, the context of Psalm 91, if you were to look at that particular passage which Satan used and the verses surrounding that, if you were to look at that uh, context of Psalm 91 
and you if you were to go to deuteronomy 6 16 and look at the context of the verses uh, you know written over there you would see that actually there is no uh, immediate direct connection so why did jesus use this particular verse you know to uh, to you know, to fight satan and we see that this verse that jesus used was so effective that satan had nothing more to say you know he had to just move on to the next temptation he 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 could not fight back why was this particular verse so effective in dealing with the temptation uh, which which satan had uh, you know um, brought using uh, psalm 91 in the wrong context so you see for every temptation there is a particular way to approach it the right way to you know uh, uh, combat the situation and because jesus was in tune with uh, you know with his father because he was familiar with the scriptures the lord gave him the correct words to speak and in this particular context even though we cannot see a very direct connection between psalm 91 and deuteronomy 616 this was the correct weapon to use this was the right sword of the spirit to use on this particular occasion you know so um, which is why uh, some believers you know they kind of try to draw a distinction between logos and rhema both the word logos and the word rhema basically mean words speech uh, you know talk so those are the those are the that's the basic meaning of both logos and rhema so some people that they you know they say rhema is basically god telling you uh, the word for that particular occasion something that will be effective for you on in that particular situation which you are facing you know so um, so for every situation that we face uh, you know every challenge that we face there are specific scriptures which would be most effective for that particular situation and if we already have the word of god hidden in our hearts then the holy spirit will bring to our remembrance the correct scripture something that will be most relevant for our particular challenge now if that cannot happen right if uh, somebody who's ju is ju has just been you know relying uh, um, at random on you know youtube sermons because um, the holy spirit kind of teaches us trains us you know on a daily basis over a period of many months preparing us for the things which are going to come along and so it's a, it's a kind of very organized training that we go through you know god knows what to teach when uh, what uh, wisdom to impart when i mean especially me you know who has this kind of teaching role that i am in right now i have really noticed um, when i'm you know spending time in god's presence when i'm you know studying the scripture he brings things to me that are so helpful for me two weeks down the line i have noticed this again and again it's like he 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 know, of course knows the future he knows what i will be requiring when and beforehand he gives me those things which i will need in my hands and so when the time comes i am ready i already have the things which i require the things that he has revealed to me the things that he has explained to me i already have those things in my hand and now it becomes easy for me to you know go ahead and you know do whatever you know is required of me so god is a god who prepares and uh, so we need to actually learn to sit down in his presence and meditate on scripture and learn to hear from him directly and uh, so here you know in john chapter 12 uh, verse 49 you know jesus says i did not speak on my own but the father who sent me commanded me to say all that i have spoken in the same way you know david also says in psalm 119 verse 13 he says with my lips i recount all the laws that come from your mouth you see whatever you have taught me whatever you have you know imparted into my heart those are the things which i am now opening my mouth and recounting so it is so important to learn at the feet of the holy spirit we cannot just keep relying on other books we can't just keep relying on other sermons those are good but those are just the side you know those are just uh, um, uh, an extra they are not the main method for, of study for a believer. The main method of study for a believer should be at the feet of the Holy Spirit, where he directly speaks to you, shows you what scriptures to you know, focus upon. He shows you uh, 
uh, he opens up certain things and, and and explains those things to you because those are going to be relevant for you in your spiritual walk so that is when the word of god becomes a sword an effective sword which you can uh, use uh, so in the process of doing this we start being come becoming familiar with the voice of the holy spirit you know very few people actually hear the audible voice of god but we all with experience begin to recognize his voice our master's voice in the way he speaks it's it's maybe different for different people but we just kind of begin to uh to recognize his voice and uh, so that familiarity does not happen for people who are you know depending probably on youtube sermons or just you know depending on books um they are not familiar with this voice because we have been you know training ourselves spending time in his presence every day we start getting familiar with the way he talks with the way he communicates so you know when someone asks how do i you know differentiate my thoughts from god's thoughts it happens over time we learn it slowly as we are spending time in his presence every day we start hearing his voice and we recognize that oh this is him saying that this is the way i should understand the scripture and all these thoughts in my head you know about how the scripture can you know be twisted to suit my situation no no that's wrong so very slowly we believers learn this we start becoming familiar with him which is why you have a lot of christians desperately going around to pastors and leaders and saying what should i do should i take up this job should i move to this new city how on earth will that pastor know whether you're supposed to move to another city or not that's something between you and your god your lord will 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 tell you what you know how in which direction your life should go he's the one who knows that so you you should be in a position to hear the lord for yourself you know rather than desperately going to someone else uh, so it is so important for us to spend time in his presence feeding our inner person with his word because in the process we also learn how to hear from him and we start becoming very familiar with his voice which goes a long way you know in fighting uh, temptation because when that when the temptation comes and it is so strong if you are not familiar with the lord's voice you will not even hear it on the other hand if you are familiar with his voice if you have hidden his scriptures in your heart in that time of challenge that scripture will just come out of your you know it will it you it will it, it, it will kind of you know jump up into your mind and you'll say yes this is what i need for this situation and you hold on to that in faith and it makes a great difference you know so by the by the word of your testimony you overcome the evil one uh, so it is so vital for us to feed our inner person with god's word and also learn how to hear from him the other thing that uh, uh, regarding using the word of god you know uh, to overcome and uh, live in victory that would be speaking out the word you know which we kind of saw now already ephesians 6:17 where it says um yeah take up the sword of the spirit which is the word of god so basically taking up the sword of the spirit involves two basic simple things first of course is that we choose to believe what the word of god is saying rather than what rather than the temptation which satan is bringing rather than the lies that he wants us to believe we choose to believe what god's word is saying and the second thing of course is that we don't just believe in um, thought we actually believe in action we act out what god's word is saying and show that yes see i'm acting out what god's word is saying because i believe what he is saying you know so i'm not going to give in to what you are saying satan i will not give in to your temptation but rather i'm going to believe and practice what god's word says so uh, so the sword of the spirit it's uh, not a very complicated uh, weapon to use uh, all we have to do is believe what the scripture is saying and we need to practice what his word is saying so rather than give in to the temptation we choose to stand on god's word the third one um, the, uh, the third way that we would use the word you know in living an overcoming life is of course by renewing our minds um because as we start meditating more on scripture our thinking gets aligned with god's thinking and uh, so when we when we do that then we discover um that what god's will is for us you know that which is what we see in romans 12 too 
where it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because you know it says in the next sentence, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So as you choose to renew your mind, you start getting transformed. You start thinking the way God thinks. And you start living according to his will. And as you start living according to his will, you discover that his will is actually very good, pleasing, perfect, that your life is going in the way it's meant to. And then you realize, oh my, you know, um, now that I have tasted of the Lord, it, uh, you know, the, the Lord is really good. So then once you get the taste of the Lord, then you will crave more for him. So you see, it's like a cycle. You start off by choosing to spend time on a scripture. As you do that, your thinking starts changing. You start thinking like him. The more you start thinking like him, the more you will start living your life in alignment with his will doing what he wants rather than what your flesh wants or what Satan is tempting you to do. So even as you start living more in line with his will, you discover at a practical level that the things that he's been telling you to do are so good and pleasing and perfect. And your life is moving in the right direction. And once you taste this and you discover that the Lord is indeed good, you will begin to crave more. So it's like a cycle that you go through again and again as a believer. So we come back again to that first scripture, you know, which we started off where we say that like newborn babies, we are craving for the pure spiritual milk. Why? Because we have now tasted and seen that the Lord is good. So, yeah, I think those are those that should be enough, you know, um, regarding how to use the word of God. Uh, so the scriptures are mentioned, of course, in your notes. Uh, the explanation as such is not given, but you have the all the verses over there in your notes. Coming to the next uh, chapter, you know, uh, in your notes, that would be walking in the spirit. So we will spend some time uh, reflecting upon this whole idea of walking in the spirit. Now, of course, we are very familiar with this idea, uh, but you know, we'll try to touch upon maybe things which we generally, you know, don't um, uh, think much about uh, so um, you know rather than dwelling on just the familiar points we'll also try to go a little beyond and see what we can you know what extra we can learn and how walking in the spirit can really lead to an overcoming life uh, so maybe we can begin by you know reading out um, that very familiar verse about walking you know, you know by the spirit um, that would be galatians 5 16 uh, if someone could you know read out Galatians 5, 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Yeah. So we have the sinful nature asking us to do certain things. And we have the Spirit of God asking us to do certain things. And so we choose not to walk uh, according to what the flesh is saying, but we choose to walk according to, the to what the Spirit of God is saying. So walking by the Spirit is something that simple, where we make a choice. To, uh, to respond to what the Holy Spirit is saying rather than respond to what the flesh is saying. So, for instance, you know, uh, if, if, um, if I'm having a, uh, an argument with someone and then that person says something that, uh, that makes me very angry, but immediately I sense in my spirit uh, that the Holy Spirit is telling me no, not to retaliate, not to speak any harsh words. So rather than uh, following my flesh, which is crying out and screaming and you know and, and it's saying you know uh, you know hit back retaliate uh, you know make make that person pay for what they are what they are saying to you so rather than give in to the desires of the flesh i choose in that moment to respond to the to the firm gentle voice of god saying no no do not do that so in that moment i choose to walk by the spirit rather than give in to the desire of the flesh 
And of course, it's not something that I can do on my own. That is why it says walk by the spirit, by the power of the spirit, by the enabling of the spirit. So in that moment, even as he tells me no, he also gives me the power to actually hold back and not open my mouth and lash out. So not only does he give me the instruction, he also gives me the enabling power to act upon that instruction. So that is basically walking by the spirit, where he enables you to walk in a way that pleases him. So, and, it, and all of this happens in a, in a matter of seconds, you see? I mean, that uh, conversation is going on. It has developed into an argument. You're presenting your viewpoint. The other person is presenting their viewpoint. It's all very heated. And um, uh, in, in the midst of that, suddenly this person starts being abusive. The, the words coming out of their mouth are really not right, are not correct. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit you know, is saying to you, no, hold back. Do not retaliate in the same way. Do not say the words you know, which you would want, you, you want to say. And so in that moment, even as you decide, yes, Lord, I would rather honor you, you begin to walk by the spirit the spirit enables you to exercise self control because that is a fruit you know that, that's part of the fruit that's part of his nature so that part of his nature he imparts to you in that moment why because you are abiding in him and you are familiar with his voice you can hear him and you immediately choose to respond so you know in that moment you are able to make the right choice not because you are very strong but by the spirit by his strength by his enabling and uh, so it is a supernatural walk it's not something that we could ever do on our own uh, but we are able to you know obey and keep his instructions because he imparts to us the power that we need in that moment to do the right thing um, which is why it says in galatians 5:25 since we live by the spirit you know by his enabling because since we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit. So when would you be able to enjoy this, you know, an anointing and empowerment and equipping by the Holy Spirit? Only when you're actually, you know, walking in step with him. If you're doing your own thing and, you know, going off in your own direction, you will never actually get to walk by the spirit, by his power, by his enabling, because you, you're doing your own thing. You need to stay side by side with him for him to be able to impart that power to you. So it's so essential. So in a way, you could actually say that this term, you know, keeping in step with the spirit is basically abiding, you know, in the vine. They're just basically two ways of saying the same thing. Um, because, I mean, how does the, you know, tree produce fruit? Um, the branches, I mean, in a, you know, in, a, in, a, in a kind of metaphorical sense, each day the branch decides, okay, I'm going to stay connected to this trunk. So as long as the branch every day decides I stay connected to the trunk and not only, not only just stay connected, I'm going to keep the connection strong between me and the trunk. So every day the branch decides that. And as long as the branch keeps deciding that on a daily basis, it bears the fruit. It doesn't have to worry about, oh, will I be able to bear fruit today? Oh my goodness, is the fruit going to come out today? No, it's just part of the natural process because it is maintaining its connection it's keeping the connection strong. Automatically, when the time comes, the fruit will just come. It's the same, you know, in the middle of that heated discussion. If I have really stayed connected with the spirit, I am walking in step with him. I am trying to live in a way that pleases and honors him. I am spending time in his presence, learning from his word. So automatically, the connection is deep. The connection is good. Uh, and so because I am walking in this way, you know, in step with him, when that in that heat of that moment, when that discussion is going on and that person starts getting abusive, I will automatically not, uh, you know, uh, open my mouth and say anything. I will be able to exercise self-control in that moment simply because that's the fruit coming out of my life. Why? Because I'm connected. So uh, we don't have, we don't, we don't struggle to produce the fruit. Uh, of the spirit that is something that the lord produces in us he gives us the self control we would need in you know, in this particular situation uh, he he's the one who provides us you know with that love and that peace uh, and that gentleness and all of that he produces in us from our side what is our responsibility that we stay in step that we stay connected 
that we continue to abide. So if we are doing that, when the time comes, you know, we, we will hear his voice. We will hear his, you know, a gentle word of instruction saying, no, do this. And we will be able to because we are well connected. So that's basically what it's saying over here. It says in Galatians 5.25, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit so that you know it's possible so that the Holy Spirit can continue to do, to do for you all that is required. And we see Romans 8, 3 to 9 saying the same thing. You know, it just says it in, in, in um, a larger number of words, but it's almost the same thing that is being said. If someone can uh, read out Romans chapter 8, verses 3 to 9, please. Romans chapter 8 verses 3 to 9. For what the law was powerless to do in that, it was weakened by the sinful nature. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be an offering, and so he condemned sin in sinful man, in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what their nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, oh, yeah. Control yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So in these verses, we see, I know we the first portion we've already dwelt upon. We talked about it in the last class. You know, we uh, the law told us what we should do, but it could not make us do that. Why? Because we were being controlled by the sinful nature. And uh, so what did, Je what did God do? He sent uh, our representative, Jesus Christ, to be, to, you know, to be our perfect representative. So he was able to keep the entire law did not break a single uh, portion of it. And so he was able to condemn sin in the flesh. He was able to declare and say, sin, you have no control over me because I have not broken a single law of God. And so because he was able to uh, fulfill the law, all of us who come under his covering, we too are now removed from under the control of the law. And you know, we are under his uh, covering and protection. For such people, what does he do? It says, the righteous requirement of the law is fully met in us. You know, God enables his righteous requirements to be fulfilled in us. So, you know, where the, taking that example that we had of that heated discussion that was going on, uh, where the other person starts to get abusive. So you just respond in your heart to the to the urging of the Holy Spirit and you choose not to retaliate. Even as you have made that choice, God is the one who gives you the enabling power to not open your mouth. He's the one who enables you to stay calm in that situation. He is the one who helps you to stay, you know, think uh, in, 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 the, in the right manner regarding what is going on over there. He starts doing all of that, all the righteous requirements of the law start being fulfilled in you in that moment it's not something that you can do on your own all you do is you just stay connected to him and he does those things in you and then when you come out of that situation you know people will say my how could you just stay you know stay still and just stand over there and listen to that and then you would say no i mean it's nothing that i did god did that in me from my side, what I have done is I've stayed connected with him. I've stayed in step with him on a daily basis so that when, when moments like this come, he can just take over and do for me what I cannot do for myself. So this is what our representative Jesus Christ does for us. So why is he able to do this for us? That's what it says in Romans 8, 4. It says, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So those of us who have made this choice to walk in step with the spirit, we are living according to the spirit. For such people, Jesus Christ is able to fulfill 
the righteous requirements you know uh, of the law so he does it for us because we are choosing to walk in step with him and when we do that it says in verse 6 you know romans 8 6 it says that such people have life and they have peace so uh, those who are you know um, allowing themselves to be controlled by the flesh it just only leads to death it leads to destruction but those of us who are living in this other way we we are being we are walking in step with the holy spirit and like it says over here our mind is governed by the spirit we are choosing to respond to the spirit on a moment by moment basis rather than responding to the flesh so our mind is being governed and controlled by the holy spirit we are submitting to him and for such people it says there is life and there is peace um as for the other for the other set of people who are being uh, governed by their flesh you know rather than by the spirit it says those people will never be able to please god um they will never be able to act in a way that you know honors him so um so so it is very important to uh, to keep in step with the spirit keep the connection strong keep the connection uh, very very clear so that on, you know in times of trial and temptation the right thing will come out because if the connection is strong the fruit of the spirit is just literally you know there in you present in you and in the right moment when the, you know when the situation is tense the the fruit of the spirit just comes out on the other hand if if our mind is being governed by the flesh we are walking in step with the flesh then what comes out you know we see all the terrible things that come out that would be mentioned in your galatians chapter 5 list because it gives a list of all the fruit of the flesh and it gives you a list of the fruit of the spirit so uh, depending on what you're walking in step with depending on what your mind uh, is governed and controlled by either by the flesh or by the spirit depending on that that kind of fruit would come out you know uh, so um so the next thing in your notes is basically you know how do we live this i mean, I mean on a, how to actually uh, walk in the spirit on a day to day basis and there are some you know uh, practical points given and the first practical point on how to actually walk in the spirit on a day to day basis is to stay filled a person a person who's like you know half empty uh, three fourths empty uh, will not be able to uh, live this spirit kind of a life yeah uh, it's so important to stay filled with the holy spirit because the more filled you are with the holy spirit the more he will be able to operate in your life he will be able to uh, you know um, uh, enable you to respond in the right manner to those challenges to those temptations so uh, the first very practical point is to stay filled with the holy spirit um you know if one of us could read out ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 ephesians 5 18 please ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery instead be filled with the spirit okay so there's a contrast being drawn over here uh, between between drunkenness and between being filled with the spirit so uh, there are many parallels that we see between th these two things um, you know uh, for instance a person who is uh, you know um, what drunk uh, they are filled with wine so if they are filled with wine uh, it makes them see the whole world in a different manner you know when they are sober uh, when they are not drunk they see life in a particular way but once the drink takes over it completely changes their perspective you know you have ha they use the term happy drunk right there are some who are happy drunks when they are once they are drunk they are like you know very happy everything looks really good to them everything looks so rosy and wonderful they feel like singing they feel like dancing so those are your happy drunks and then you have your violent drunks when they get drunk everything looks like you know deep dark red there's this, this rage this anger they lash out so the wine makes them see things um completely differently 
everything looks different so if you're a happy drunk and you're filled with wine you would find everything so rosy you know you would probably climb up on a table and start dancing on the other hand if you are a violent drunk once you're filled with that wine everything you know is something which causes anger which triggers rage inside you and you lash out so it changes your perspective of the way you see things in the same way when you are filled with the holy spirit your entire perspective changes everything looks so different because now you are seeing through the eyes of the holy spirit and everything looks so different so it is so important what you are filled with it literally affects the way you look at every single thing it totally changes your very perspective so uh, you know it's so important in choosing to be filled with the spirit because when we when we are filled with the spirit it at the very fundamental level it affects the way we see everything itself that itself changes uh, so we will look further you know into this uh, we'll um, come back from our break at 11 and log in uh, so at 11 you know we'll just kind of um, dwell a little further on this whole concept or uh, you know of, of the contrast between being drunk with wine and being filled with the spirit um, so yeah at 11 o'clock thank you <laughs>